Hello, Santa Barbara Free Methodist Church. I have been missing you. First, because I was in North Carolina for a clergy conference, and second, because we are all practicing wisdom and safe distancing, we aren't able to see one another in person. We're all experiencing a very surreal and difficult time right now. There's a lot of anxiety and wondering what will happen. We have had our share of crises in Santa Barbara with fires and mudslides as a community. We know how to surround one another, but this is unlike anything that we have experienced before because it's on a global scale. Daily, there are more cases of the virus reported and we wait for the full force of it to hit our community. And in the meantime, life as we have known it has changed. Schools shut down, trips postponed, events canceled, working from home, or perhaps there is no work. There are many unknowns. And all of us are going through the gamut of sadness and worry about the future, and of course, isolation. Our lives have been completely disrupted. In Matthew 11, we find important words from Jesus. In this chapter, we see that John the Baptist is in prison, and he has sent a messenger to Jesus. And he says, are you the one we're expecting? Are you the Messiah? Or are we still waiting for another person to come? And Jesus says to the messenger, go and tell John that the blind can now see, the lame can walk, the deaf can hear, the good news is being proclaimed to the poor. In other words, yes, I'm the Messiah. I am the awaited one. God is on the move. Jesus then tells his disciples how among those born of women, there is none that has risen greater than John. John was sent by God to be a prophet and a messenger, and everything that God asked, John did. But the people didn't receive John. Not all the people did. Not all the people were receiving Jesus, and he had harsh words. For those who saw miracles, for those who saw that God was on the move and still did not believe. And then he prays and he gives God thanks for revealing, revealing his truth to those who will believe and trust like children. To those who receive him with open arms and a willingness to hear what he has to say. And then Jesus says these familiar words. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is an invitation to all those who are weary, to those who are feeling the burden and the grief in this world that is weighing them down. Jesus was talking to people who were living under cruel imperial Rome, Roman occupation, and those who were wealthy living at the expense of the poor. He was talking to followers who had the extra load of religious legalism that they were carrying and they were all trying to find a way to live life, the ups and the downs that all of us experience. In this time that we're facing, the invitation of Jesus is one that we should take. He is offering rest for our weary souls. He is holding out his hand so that he can help to take our burdens. Church, are you weary? How is the despair that all of us are feeling all around us taking a toll on your heart and mind? We worry about the future and how the pandemic is going to possibly permanently change everything. We feel the hopelessness of the situation while doing everything that we can, everything that we're being told 
knowing that it might not be enough. The Lord here isn't simply giving us a nice theological idea. Jesus is the God who lives among us, who is able to take the crushing pressure, the crushing load off of us to help shoulder the load. A life permanently yoked to the Messiah brings freedom from being bound to the fear and darkness of the world. This is good news indeed. Now we are in the middle of Lent, which is a time where the followers of Jesus intentionally seek to know him more in the reality where they find themselves living. Come to me, he says. Let me give you the rest that your soul needs. I encourage you as your pastor to take daily time to make the decision to give the Lord the things that weigh you down. Don't just keep going. Pay attention to what is burdening your soul. Pay attention to what is burdening others that you are carrying. Stop and ask Jesus to help you on the journey. Name what is being difficult for you. Tell him how you need his yoke instead of the one that you have made, instead of the one being placed on you. We are in this for the long haul. So choosing to be connected to Jesus will enable us to make it through. Remember what Jesus said. The blind can see. The lame can walk. He is still doing miracles every day. That is good news indeed. Let us pray. Lord, you have invited us to come directly to you. Thank you. As the risen Messiah, you miraculously come alongside and give us rest that we so desperately need. Nothing is impossible with you. Father, you know the situation that the whole world is in right now. We ask for your divine intervention in stopping this virus. We pray for your help. We cry out to you, God, for mercy. Please lift the burdens we are facing as we figure out what to do in our work responsibilities, in our families, for our own health, for our neighbors, in our church. God, help us not to panic, but to recognize your living presence among us. Lord, help us to steep ourselves in your spirit so that we can listen to you and what you have for us. As we walk with you, we ask for you to shoulder our burdens and to give us peace. Help us to continue to tell others about you, to invite them to know your good news, to bring their burdens to you as well. Thank you, God, for all of the leaders that are working hard, God, around the world, in our own nation, to help all citizens. Would you please give the medical community great wisdom and provision as they have so much responsibility. We pray for those who are compromised and vulnerable in any way. We lift up those who are mourning, who are mourning the loss, God, of those they love. Would you please help all of us who are struggling with disrupted lives. May the church continue to offer care and great compassion. Your love compels us to reach out beyond ourselves. We pray these things in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. On a practical note, I just want to encourage you about a few things. If you're able to give blood, there's much need now. So please contact your blood bank and donate if you can. Also, in Santa Barbara, the food bank and the Unity Shop are asking for donations. And I know that we are overwhelmed with the grocery uh, store aisles being empty, but there are so many who can't afford to go. So if you have extra, please share. We have closed our Cliff Drive Care Center preschool and are still paying our teachers uh, to come and to clean and to organize and disinfect and also to uh, reach out to their students via video chat to read to their students and uh, do some lessons for them in this time. 
If you would like to donate to help with their salary, uh, that would be helpful. If you want to donate to the Benevolence Fund of our church, uh, where we help people in need, that also would be welcome. I encourage you to keep reaching out to one another and to your neighbors around you. And although we can't meet in person, there are many ways to stay connected. And we're going to be uh, sending those out to you in the next uh, few days and weeks. Remember, we're having live stream service on Sunday morning at 930. If you are in need of pastoral care, or any kind of care in a tangible way, please let us know. You can call the pastors directly or the church office. Lastly, each week, one of our pastors will be bringing you a short devotional like I did today. We're calling it Wednesday Word. It's meant to encourage you in your faith and your walk with the Lord, and I hope that that happened for you today. Until next time, may the presence of the Lord surround you with his peace. Amen. This has been Wednesday Word with the Free Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. We hope that you'll join us for worship via live stream this Sunday at 9.30 a.m.